Well, hello everybody, it's Christine at CL Aldridge Art. Welcome back to a new coloring adventure. Um, today, I thought that we would uh, color in my book, The Best of CL Aldridge Mandalas, uh, using the Cali Art markers. Decided to put the pencils aside. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, this is the project that I am currently working on with my Prismacolors. This is um, uh, drawing is available in my Etsy shop. There is a link below to my Etsy shop. This is in the new art section of the store. It is destined for my next book. Um, despite what it looks like, I really don't draw a lot of mandalas. Uh, I do draw a number of uh, different types of drawings. Uh, but this book uh, has all 48 uh, of the mandala adaptations uh, from my other books. And uh, as you can see, we've been uh, coloring along in them. Uh, this is representative, uh, this came out at the same time, and it is representative of my first eight books uh, that have been released. And um, as you can see, it has a different type of drawing in many of them. Um, just a quick idea. This is one that we did on stream, or I did a video series on uh, with, um, I was using my gold shimmer paints. And, whoops. Where is the other one? There's one that I did with uh, Derwent Ink Tents, and here is another one with the Ink Tents and the Grappa Tents, and then that, uh, there it is. This was done entirely with the Deli pencils, uh, so the budget brand uh, Deli, um, kind of a polychromos oil-based pencil knockoff, and um, I was really pleased with the way this one came out. Uh, but without further ado, let's go for it. I have picked out a fall color palette for this. Pardon my hands. Um, and I've made notes so that I can uh, show you exactly which ones I picked. The first color that I picked is yellow. And uh, this is the pastel yellow. So number 204. Uh, no, sorry, I'm wrong. I picked out the yellow yellow, which is number 314, and complemented that with walnut, which is the Y332. Uh, then I moved down into uh, the petty pole, which is a green. So I picked out uh, this um, sort of olive type green. And I picked out this turquoise blue. Uh, actually, it's turquoise green light. I have the brown, which is the Y934, which I believe is this one. And I have the shrimp, which, ooh, it's just such a pretty color, uh, which is the R025. In addition to that, I did uh, bring out the colorless blender, um, which I will use for any corrections that I need to make, as well as the black marker to act as a foil because black is always a great color. And who knows, we may make it look a little Halloween-y. It is the season. And let's see if I can smoothly find, this is the mandala that I picked to work on today. Once again, not truly a mandala, more like uh, drawn in a round shape. Since I am going to be using markers, I am going to, whoops, and now I've lost it again. I cut a new page just for this. This is one of those, um, um, uh, dollar store cutting mats that I cut down to fit the book. And this is actually 
an eight and a half by eight and a half book. So I will use a couple of binder clips just so that, whoops, probably going to be easier to do it this way. Just to hold the page down and protect the page underneath because markers do, of course, bleed through. Uh, there is no way to prevent marker bleed through. Doesn't matter what kind of paper you use, alcohol markers are going to bleed through. So it doesn't work if it's uh, black. You know, if there's black on the back, all that does is uh, allow the black from the back to bleed, bleed up uh, through the paper, and you don't want that in your drawings. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, and how is everybody? <laughs> Welcome to um, my coloring world. It has been a, uh, for those of you who saw my Sunday show, you know that it's been a stressful couple of days. I do have a friend who is, uh, who is suffering with some health issues right now. And uh, the news is actually fairly good. Uh, she did end up having to have the surgery. Um, they delivered her the, re she had a CAT scan yesterday, or I guess Monday. Uh, I'm just not going to say what day it is today because that always gets me in trouble. But uh, she got the results of her test on Monday. She had the test on Sunday. And uh, they did take her pretty much immediately into surgery. Uh, as it turned out, the infection was quite a bit worse than they had uh, hoped that it would be. And uh, it resulted in her uh, needing some emergency surgery. So um, they went ahead and did that, but I did talk to her uh, tonight and... Uh, and she is doing well. Um, and she really likes her doctors. And I think that that is such an important thing for all of us to develop a rapport uh, with our doctors, to not be afraid of them, to ask questions, and to basically insist um, that they take the time that we need uh, to explain uh, what they're going to do, why they're going to do it, why it's necessary, how it will ultimately affect you, and um, all of the other things. And um, she's very lucky in that she has found a doctor that is like that, uh, who actually worked with her today for quite a while. They developed a plan for her continued treatment, and because, uh, of course, you know, it never, when it rains, it pours, there are several things that uh, she is going to have to endure over the next few months, but uh, hopefully um, we'll find out uh, soon that, um, you know, some even better news. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to give away her health secrets, but uh, I am going to say that uh, that I am hopeful for her and uh, and hopefully everything will work out and I am pleased to say that I am uh, just thrilled with the way that my new computer system is performing for uh, making videos and editing them and uh, so hopefully I will be making more of them. This, by the way, is just the yellow. And I'm just going to straight color with markers. And then we're going to embellish with uh, uh, whatever we happen to like. I did catch up with uh, a little bit of uh, Curiosity Incorporated. 
uh, this just now, as a matter of fact, <laughs> found out that the Potter's House is uh, is going to be rented out. So that's good news for uh, the young man who owns Curiosity Inc. Because uh, it'll be one less mortgage payment out of his own pocket <laughs> this month uh, or next month. And uh, it looks like they may rent out the space where their old store was as well, since they own that as well. So, um, okay, now this is, these also are connectors. I'm just coloring all the connectors uh, gold with this fall palette. I have become very much enamored of um, straight coloring with markers and then embellishing with uh, glitter gel pens or white Posca or, um, you know, metallics or anything like that. Like adding a little glitter and sheen, a little sparkle, it makes me happy. It makes me very, very happy. Plus, it's a lot... Um, I don't want to say it's easier for me, but it is, uh, it goes a little faster than coloring with pencils, although I love the result of coloring with pencils. But that is, that is something you do when you really need to go to your Zen space. <laughs> and when I need to talk on the air to you guys, uh, my Zen space is good, but I'm awfully quiet while I'm there. Uh, now I'm going to add some green. This is this lovely petty pole green. And I hope that you are having a good day. That if there is something that is troubling you, that it is uh, soon to be resolved or... <coughs> If there is a health issue that you are suffering from, that you uh, are not suffering too greatly, and that are you are finding relief, and um, I've been really enjoying some of the Instagram posts that I've been seeing this week. Some are funny, and some are uh, touching, and some are beautiful coloring work but they're all from you guys and uh, they're absolutely wonderful and thank you all by the way for the support that you showed me and my friend yesterday um, on my show it's uh, as I'm sure all of you know it's hard when you're far away from somebody that you love and you can't really help them. Except to be there and be their friend. And worry for them and pray for them and all of those kinds of things. These are such pretty colors together. I love fall season. It's very inspiring. You know, looking at the trees and and all of that. Now let's pick it up and pull, pull a, uh, a cool color in here. Um, okay. I have to remind myself that it's the, the black mark is on the narrow end. Now I always try this, but these markers do bleed. And so, um, I want to actually, actually, I, you know what? I think I'm going to do that with, with a, uh, with paint. So I am going to just go ahead and color that in. Just leaving a little bit of light so that it looks like a cabochon stone. And you see how small that got. And I made it a really big. 
opening so you can see that that really bleeds in there and uh, as it is that time of year and we've got all of the uh, deadlines for registering to vote and all of that closing I hope that all of you have taken the opportunity to make sure that you are registered to vote if you are here in the United States or in a country that you have the right to vote in um, definitely do so oh I'm liking the way that those look okay that sound back and forth sorry guys <laughs> oh I just love that all right so now I need a color to go inside there but maybe we'll think about that in a second um, what color for underneath the not the walnut uh, not the yellow, maybe not the brown. I may need another color. We shall see what we shall see. I may need another color, but we'll, because the only real like flowery color I have is this. And I don't want to, I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm stuck making only, you know, that gold. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> what I want is I want these, these to be a different color. Okay, that's what I'm going, that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go with the shrimp, the RO25. And I'm going to make these the shrimp. Because I want something that will stand out against the gold that I just used right there. And if I make these little flowers gold, they'll just blend right in there. I didn't think I had limited myself so much in the color palette, but I think we'll make it work out. And uh, let's see, I guess I, I was just, you know, I listen a lot to Anne over at A Colorful Life and uh, compared to mine, her life is so interesting and I just don't think that mine is right now. It was, but it isn't anymore. I have been very, very lucky my entire life to enjoy um, good health. I do have, I do, uh, and I've made a, no secret about this, I do suffer from depression and, and uh, boy, I've been caught in a pretty bad one for the last several uh, months. And, uh, so I've sort of been casting around for inspiration, for uh, drawing, for, uh, you know, something that really get my teeth into again, uh, which is really what I need in order to be able to uh, finish a book uh, of new art. And I need to finish one for the Christmas season. So... I was very, very uh, happy about drawing dragons, but then um, something happened over the summer that sort of derailed me for a little bit. And uh, can't seem to get that mojo back. 
Does that ever happen to you guys? With whatever it is that you're doing where you're happy about doing something and then something will come along and sort of throw cold water on it and then you find it's really hard to get the mojo back. Which for an artist can sometimes be a really bad thing. On the other hand, it can also be a good thing because it can signal the a change of direction or a, a you know a, a something new about to take the forefront uh, you know certainly within the drawing realm but uh, maybe not as um, not in the same direction you are going and that is one of the reasons why I think that Inktober is very valuable uh, is because it really does get you to drawing something every day and with the prompts sometimes you can find inspiration so I think maybe I'll do that maybe tomorrow I'll pick up a pen and and look at whatever the day's prompt is I I have not been doing Inktober this year um, but uh, maybe I should do that And maybe I'll just shut up and do a voiceover on this one. <laughs> Although I don't know about that either. All right, now I'm going to go back to the gold. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to escape. Well, actually, let's see. Because there is no reason why I cannot think outside the box and use a color like walnut to do flower leaves. There's just no reason why not. So maybe that will be my inspiration to have something turn out really interestingly by using well, a color like walnut brown for flower leaves. Why not? Is there a rule that says flowers can't be brown? Just because nature doesn't grow any brown flowers. It's like, I love the, um, you know, the, the sepia type print uh, where it's like a, um, is it twall? Is that the, the, uh, the kind that has, uh, the, it's the fabric that has just the single color, uh, but they used to do it with like the, old-fashioned prints um, that were like towns or, or scenes um, and that type of thing. I love those. You usually saw them either rose pink or like a cobalt blue um, or a pretty lime green. Those are the colors that I seem to remember. Maybe it wasn't lime green. Maybe it was grass green. <clears throat> I bought some once to cover. It was upholstery fabric is really what it was. Upholstery and, um, and um, fabric to uh, put on the walls. So wallpaper. And I want to say it was called Twall. T-O-I-L-L-E. But I don't want to, I think in my mind I'm confusing twall and tulle, T-U-L-L-E, which is the stuff that they make tutus out of. I honestly do not know.
okay just just wait because we're gonna we're gonna I mean it's ugly right now but we're gonna go for the pretty factor I promise <laughs> or this will be yet another failed video <laughs> I have a computer full of videos that I've never published because for one reason or another uh, they just didn't work out I either never finished them or they ran too long or uh, or I totally messed up the picture no Christine really say it isn't so you totally messed up a picture yes I did more than one that I simply could not bring back from the edge of, uh, of destruction. Trying to make sure I'm actually staying on camera. This is where I miss doing live streams. It's not, you know, because I can, oftentimes I can build conversation based around what you guys are saying as I'm sitting here it's hard for me to uh, it's hard for me to um, think of what to talk about that isn't the stuff that I would love to talk about which is always the controversial stuff the you know politics and uh, the rumor mill, you know, the danger of the rumor mill, that kind of thing. What's going on in the news? Whether I think we have more boogeymen now or we only think we have boogeymen now because it's all we seem to talk about. You know, I was thinking about that today. Because there was, a, actually, I have a hedge outside my uh, kitchen window. And on the, I was looking out the window, and all I saw was this little head riding by on a bicycle. And it was this little girl. And I immediately looked to make sure that she had a, a family member or, you know, an adult that was walking with her. And she indeed did. Um, and so that made me feel better. And then I got to thinking of, you know, even in the time that my next door neighbor's son was only 13, the kids were riding around the neighborhood uh, on their bicycles and you didn't worry if there was an adult with them. And now, of course, it's automatic that we worry that, you know, if we see a little kid out alone, how, you know, little kids aren't supposed to be out alone. And how much that has changed from when I grew up. And, you know, it was all about daybreak, uh, take off on the bike and, you know, come back in time for lunch and then come back in when it gets dark. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. And so is it really that much more dangerous or do we perceive it to be that way because there's now been so many television shows uh, you know, based on, uh, you know, crimes against people and, and that type of thing? Or are there really more incidences of that kind of behavior in the world? And that's a question I don't know the answer to. And, uh, and of course, it's far too dangerous to experiment with. You can't say, well, let's, you know, let's try letting the kids out by themselves. Because, uh-uh, no. <laughs> so on the one hand, are we giving in to fear? Uh, 
Are, you know, in other words, are we creating the fear or is the fear real? And if it's not real, will we ever be able to be the way we were again? And I don't know the answer to that either. I don't think so. In small communities, you will still see kids out, uh, you know, out in small towns and things like that. You'll still see kids out, but not nearly as much as you used to. An interesting question of psychology, and I don't know what, you know, I don't know what the answer is. I am going to end up having to can this video again. Once again, maybe I'll just take out the sound and do a, uh, do a voiceover. I was also watching Pencil Stash today thinking, I wish she would make some more videos. <clears throat> and I don't know, there's something about her voice that uh, I really like. Uh, my understanding is her name is Rachel. That's what somebody has told me. Uh, but I do believe that she is still making videos, but I think she's doing it for Skillshare. Although I could be wrong. And that is a subscription service. So we can always change the color on those, by the way. If we decide we don't like them brown. Although it's not bad. Oops, I missed one. I can see it. I can see it in the camera. I missed it. Is that the only one I mix, missed? Or is somebody out there shouting at me that I missed another one? I think that's got them all. If not, we'll get them on the second round. Okay, now for these little guys. I hope that shows up. And if it doesn't, I'll just put it back in with white. Um, later on. It's kind of a <laughs> subtle, subtle effect. Here, let's see if I'm zooming down there so you can actually see it. I actually have no idea what's going on on color tube these days. I've been, uh, You know, between sort of worrying about my friend and being online and doing, you know, various research to see if there was, uh, you know, at least learn about the trouble that she's having and, you know, how it's typically treated and, you know, things like generally just sort of being an advocate and learning what's going on, especially, you know, when I'm so far away. Um, because I'm a firm believer in education and, you know, in figuring out, you know, what is, what is the deal? But I will say this, she is a marvelous advocate for herself. 
and of course smart as a whip so she knows the right questions to ask she has always been the the caregiver amongst uh the two of us the you know the one who who um uh you know cares for the other people in her life so i think that is why this is a uh, it, it's this is why it's it's difficult uh, to to acknowledge that you know this time it is her turn to be be ill. Remember back in the day when everybody lived in the same town and oftentimes entire families lived under the same roof and we weren't separated by hundreds of miles or thousands of miles in our case. But she has sisters and brothers and or actually a sister and a brother. I haven't decided yet on that one, so we're not going to do that. The rest of this. Um, and she's got a brand new little grandson who, because of all this stuff that's been going on, she has not yet even had the opportunity to meet because it involves having to travel. Um, You know, she hasn't yet met him in person. Oh, I'm liking that. I'm actually liking all of, all of this so far. So far, I'm not I'm not unhappy with these colors at all. I'm going to pause here. Well, hi, everybody. And uh, this is going to voice over because uh, apparently when I paused for just a second, I completely forgot to turn the sound back on. <laughs> so I was just watching the uh, playback of this little snippet and... Uh, realized that it was totally silent and I uh, had to laugh at myself and then I had to figure out how to because uh, I hadn't set up voiceover for the new new um, computer system yet so uh, this is a test a silent uh, sound test uh, to see if it worked and if so um, how to do it I also was uh, trying to figure out a little bit if um I could just do a simple voiceover in the uh, what passes for the video editor in that comes with Windows 10, but um, I was like, well, I already know how to do it in my regular video, so I might as well do it there. Uh, so I was just finishing up with the blue, and uh, if I remember correctly, I am saying that I am really fond of all these colors together. Um, now, of course, I'm looking for hunting up a new place to use that blue, and I obviously find it in that particular little spot. And uh, now, of course, as I'm I'm looking at this, uh, getting ready to film the section that will come right after this one, uh, I'm wondering if maybe I ought to zhuzh it up a little bit more, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, <laughs> so I've chosen gold now. Uh, I'm about to realize that I used the wrong color for those, um, uh, all of the brown bits so far. Uh, I actually used the brown when it was my intention, or I used the walnut 
when it was my intention to use the brown. And that's why I was looking at that color going, mm, well, maybe this wasn't the right choice after all. Uh, but here at the end of this little snippet, I will figure it out. Right now, right here is where I'm about to figure it out, that I used the wrong. Um, and so I, I pick them both up, and I'm looking at them, and I'm going, well, now, wait a minute. What did I do? And why are these colors wrong? And I'll end up swatching one again. Uh, and... You know, it's pretty funny. Ultimately, I'm going to decide on the uh, some more of the, um, uh, oh, what color did I say it was? Uh, the shrimp. So that's more of the shrimp that I'm putting on the outside. I wanted to somehow tie the outside of those petals in with the center of the flower. And uh, I'm just sort of figuring out one of these so I know how to go on. Because ultimately what I want to do is I want to adapt all the colors or incorporate all the colors, either the same colors into the two that are across from each other or introduce another color uh, into the two that are then opposite those. So ultimately I'm going to decide on adding the third color, but you'll see that here in the next part. For right now, this is just voicing over this particular part. So now I am uh, I'm swatching these out because I've just figured out that I'm using the wrong ones. Oh, that's what the problem was. So silly me. And now I'm going to, because what I was doing is I was looking for a color for in that space and I wanted it to be different than the brown that I'd already used, but I couldn't figure out why it wasn't right. And that's why. So now this is the actual walnut color, or no, this is the brown, brun, B-R-U-N. And what I'd previously used was the walnut. So, and I should be able to tell that just by looking at it. Oh, that's me giving the thumbs up doesn't work very well with my pen in my hand. <laughs> uh, you might as well have fun while you're coloring. Plus, this gives me a chance to test out um, voiceover and see how I feel about uh, doing a video with voiceover. And because I'm not, as I'm coloring along on this, I'm not feeling very humorous and uh, I feel a little better now. What was happening here was I was getting uh, hangry, you know, I was hungry, so I was getting annoyed with myself, and I don't know if that happens to either any of you guys, but uh, it surely happens to me. Okay, and we are back to real time where I am actually here. All right, I have in my hands the marigold, but we're going to talk about that uh, here in just a second. Um... <laughs> I, I don't know if it caught the last part of that as I was talking because the video ended before I uh, had a chance to finish what I was saying but I was talking about being hangry and how I didn't know if any of that's what was happening to me earlier so never mind I'll just shut up now <laughs> I think I was asking if that ever happens to any of you guys where you start to get annoyed with yourself if you are hungry so I stopped the video, I ate some dinner, <clears throat> I feel better. I'm reminded every time I recap this pen um, of uh, a little foible that uh, the guy who runs uh, Color or Curiosity Ink has and his <laughs> drives his wife crazy. He can't stand to leave the milk out for longer than, you know, like maybe 30 seconds at a time. And she thinks that's funny because, you know, he thinks that if you put it out on the dinner table for the kids to just grab a quick refill that, you know, that it will go sour faster. 
and I kind of agree with him. I don't like it when, you know, I, I'm kind of that way too. If I need to have the milk out for longer than about 30 seconds, like when I'm making a cream sauce or something like that, I start to get worried that it will warm up and go sour. Even though with ultra pasteurized milk, it's hard to imagine it ever going sour these days. But I imagine it would. You see, this is how my mind works. I It skitters all over the place to all of these different thoughts, which is, I mean, Lord knows I can move from the, uh, you know, the perils of, of, uh, the perils versus the ultimate uh, limitlessness of nuclear energy um, to whether or not the milk is going to go sour all in the space of about uh, a heartbeat. So I think it's sometimes one of the reasons why I sort of drown my, you know, drown the noise or drown the silence out with uh, like the television being on and stuff like that. Oh yeah, see I love, I love these colors together. I really do. The, uh, I pulled a, a color palette from Pinterest is really what I did. A fall color palette. And this turquoise green wasn't in it, but it was a color that I really wanted to use. So I thought it could be an extra. And that's exactly, it's just, it's a beautiful color. Whoops. Sorry about that, I don't mean to get off the screen. And let's see here. I'm trying to think if uh All right, I think that I'm going to go ahead, and this is the gold, so I'm going to go ahead and do these. Don't mean to be quiet, hopefully you are coloring. What are you coloring? And um, if it's something from one of my books, which book are you coloring from? And don't be afraid to say if it's, you know, you're coloring from somebody else's book. It's okay. I realize that there are more than just me as the artists of the world. Hopefully you do own some of my books or some of the drawings from my Etsy shop and do color and post. But... It's not certainly required every time you join me. Whoops. There I go getting off the screen again. Sorry, guys. In other words, it's not a requirement of coloring along with me. I do have a... eight books, oh, actually, uh, well, there's 10, there's actually 11, if you count the travel size, but there are eight unique books, and then there are three that are adaptations of the art that's in those other eight. 
So there's the mandalas book, which pulls mandalas out of all of the volumes. There's the 40 fan favorites, which is the five most, or well, five of the top 10 favorite drawings out of the first eight books. The other five will go in volume two, which is my fallback position in the event that I don't, whoops, sorry, off screen again, in the event that I don't make a holiday deadline with all new art. Um, yeah, I like this. Okay. I like the way that this is coming together. Although I strongly suspect that I will um, rally to new art in the uh, not not too distant future, <laughs> like here within the next couple of weeks. And then if I if I really kind of crack down and get into drawing mode, I could probably finish a book by November or November. Um, okay, so now let's go back to the shrimp, and this doesn't look very red going down. It looks really brown, but it actually is drying uh, as bright as those center flowers are. And I did catch the last few minutes of Dee Dee Willingham's show today uh, with her working in uh, one of the abandoned books. And as usual, it was simply incredible. like I was casting shadows there. I try not to do that. I try to keep the camera angle at a point where I'm not casting shadows so it make it very difficult for you to uh, see what I'm doing with my hands. Yeah, I, uh, I'm liking this uh, this color palette for fall. I like the dark jewel tones to begin with. Um, so to me, a dark color palette like this is, the, is perfect. Okay, so that's one. And then I also, because I used the, uh, the turquoise here, I was going to go ahead and use this same uh, yellow for the leaves on this one so that these two will be in the same color palette. Then these two I'm going to bring in another color. Um, it'll be in the same yellow family but it'll be slightly darker and the color that I'm bringing in is this marigold. Um, So we'll go with that, but not just yet. I kind of want to keep from turning my turquoise to green there by hopefully staying off of it with my yellow. Golden leaves.
It's a bit of an unusual palette. Yeah, that'll work. Now it does, I mean, it is sort of coming in right with the same color as that, which was what I wanted to try and avoid with these, but I think that it'll work. And, um, and it'll be okay. So I hope that all of our Canadian friends had a uh, lovely day off today or yesterday. Um, yesterday it was Monday. It is technically now the wee hours of Tuesday morning. I started this uh, late Monday night. It's actually, oh, it's very nearly 6 a.m. goodness. One of the uh, symptoms of, of course, um, or one of the, not really a symptom, but one of the one of the things about uh, suffering through a bout of depression like I have been. And, you know, it's not depression is not what you think it is. Uh, for the most part, I've been very lucky. I don't, I don't suffer self-harm depression or anything like that. Um, my depression usually manifests itself in an unwillingness to want to be awake. Um, I sleep a lot, and of course that just makes it worse. So, uh, but then I try to stay up, and and uh, and that's sort of forcing myself. I get a little zombie-esque, so. I usually feel better if I do get a good night's sleep, and I feel, of course, terrible if I oversleep. So uh, I try hard not to over, you know, not to not to sleep for like you know twelve hours, that kind of thing. But I'm known for taking frequent naps. And for me, a nap can last anywhere from 20 minutes to a, uh, you know, to five hours. But I have the freedom to do that uh, in that I am, you know, self-employed. But it is, it does wreak havoc with your schedule. And um, so... And in this particular case, it does affect my productivity. And that that is, um, you know, that is not a good thing when you are self-employed. And your income is directly related to how much work you are doing. But then I ask the question, okay, well, what is work? You know, what is, is, is coloring my work? Ooh. No, drawing is my work. Coloring is something I do for pleasure. But if I film it for a YouTube channel, does it go back to work? And that, you know, all of, all of those uh, are conversations that sort of swim around in my head. Because when I sit in color like this, it feels like I'm playing hooky from work. So I don't think that coloring is work. And I don't think that uh, visiting 
on YouTube is work. That is also playing hooky from work. <laughs> and I would rather, there are many days, many recent days when I would rather play hooky <laughs> than work. Does that make any sense at all? But at least this kind of playing hooky uh, serves a couple purposes. It either uh, we can either keep each other company, which hopefully uh, you will watch this video and uh, I don't know either be cheered or jeered jeer at me about it. Um, and I can keep you company. Although I just don't understand how that would be possible. Seems like all I really do is sort of drone on. Well, children, this is the way it used to be when I was a youngster. <laughs> uh, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> hmm. I'm fairly open-minded, so... Uh... I don't usually find myself stuck in the, well, children, it, it used to be this way. I'm like, yeah, it used to be that way, but now it's different and it's okay. All right, so now this is the R025. So this is the one that um, the R025 is the brown. Is that right? The brun. No, the Brun is the 934, and that is the color that I want. Yes, this is the color that I want to do these in. I don't know, I'm so confused. Oops, sorry. Should have given you a little warning before I twisted that page quite severely. I've been told that I make people dizzy sometimes. I need to think of a good story to tell you guys. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think if there's stories that I could actually tell that won't get anybody in trouble. Or give away, give away secrets. That kind of thing. Okay, now I do want to try and experiment a little bit uh, with the black although I do happen to be an advocate of leaving white space uh, I am I am going to color these black anyway just to see if that's the wrong choice And there I go into my Zen spot again. Jeez. Louise. Dead silence. Sorry about that, everybody. Hopefully I'm staying on the page. Mm. 
Okay. So there are those. We are looking good. All right, let's pull in the Marigold now, which is the Y416. And um, because it is a standalone, not going to be incorporated into any of this, I wanted to use it in these big wide spaces. So let's see if it's different enough from the gold to bear up to that or if I need to step it into a darker orange. Or a brighter orange. I think that is different enough. Oh yeah, okay. I think that is definitely different enough. Trying to get to the top of that chisel tip. Okay, now well, let me see if I can, because this one I know I can do with just the top. Okay, but that's going to get me out of the lines in that particular. See how it's all out of the lines on that side? <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to fix that. Just use your colorless blender. In the outside uncolored area. And just use it to push that. It's easier to do while it's wet. Just push that back in. So now the marigold again. I hope it'll stay in there. Whatever came out, it's, it's fine because whatever color I decide to put in that space will likely be darker. It'll either be this brown or uh, it could be black. But it'll be dark enough to take that, that spot away. Or that stain away. So I'll do my edges with the fine tip. And then I can do the... Uh, Kind of broader space and cover more area with the chisel tip. Yeah. Okay. Not going to do it. Not going to try it again. Better safe than sorry. There we go. Alright. Now... I also think that what I want to do with, uh, I'm just going to go that far for right this very second because I'm anxious to experiment with this particular area. Um, so this is the shrimp, the RO25. Is that right? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and use, 
I was unclear as to what color to make these. But I think if, if I'm going to use the marigold over here too, that I will go ahead and make these the shrimp red. because I think that'll blend really nicely in with the marigold. My focus is gone as far as my eyes go, so. I'm seeing a little bit double. Not really double, just um, just been a long day. Okay. <coughs> now let's see how the marigold looks with that. Oops, I missed one. Missed one. There we go. That's better. I'm going to pick this one because it's driest. It's where I started. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, that'll work. That's a good color. I am liking this color palette, yes? What do you think? You guys like this color palette? Let me know what you think in the comments. And, um... I think it's a great fall palette. And uh, let's see. <laughs> Doing an awful lot of and eyeing tonight. My apologies, everybody. I need to stop and eyeing and and uh. <laughs> Find something better to talk about. I like that flower. I like the colors in that. All right, that is, this is working for me. This because you know I'm so color palette challenged. And, uh, so, but I, I have a pretty good imagination. So, if I can get, a, you know, if I can get colors that I know work well together, I can place them it doesn't, well, if you've got colors that work well together, it doesn't matter where you place them because it, the result is going to be good. So, you know, what I, what I did was that's why I looked on Pinterest and I found, um, uh, a, I would show it to you, but it's, um, 
I don't know if the picture is owned, is under copyright or not. Um, if I found it, uh, I'd rather not put it on, uh, on YouTube and run the risk of having a copyright or a, a, a community guidelines ding by having a copyright infringement issue. So um, I'll just tell you that I matched the colors of it exactly. And it was all these colors except for the turquoise. The turquoise wasn't in it. So the turquoise is my own addition. And I think I did a pretty good addition. Patting myself on the back. That it, it was a good choice. Not to mention the fact that it's just this gorgeous color. And it was just screaming at me to use it. And I hadn't used it before. I actually wanted to also pick colors in the Cali Art set that I hadn't used before. So, um... And I looked back over my projects that I've done with Cali Arts, and I have not used any of these. So it's good to... I like to spread the use of the markers around. Since, of course, they can run dry and you can't replace them one at a time. You have to buy a whole new set. So, better to work with colors that you don't use a lot. So that they all sort of dry out evenly. Otherwise, you get stuck in the end with all the colors that you don't normally use. Which are perfectly valid colors. The other thing that I have been doing way too much of is not eating right. I've been eating way too many um, uh, pre-prepared frozen meals, you know, like Marie Callender's or because I, I wait until they go on sale and then I buy them. Uh, when they're affordable and that way they're in there and I usually have a few in the freezer for those nights when I just don't feel like cooking and of course I haven't felt like cooking for <laughs> too many nights in a row and I've noticed that that uh, if you don't want to eat too much of that stuff it's not good for you it's got so much salt in it and you know the sodium content is pretty high, that kind of thing. So, plus I just feel better when I, you know, when I cook from scratch, and I know that I've got fresh, fresh vegetables, and that went into the pot, onions and celery and potatoes and. I have all the makings for a chicken stew. I just got stew vegetables last night, or not last night, I guess it was Saturday night. Saturday night. I had to go get, um, I was out of, what was I, oh, I was out of milk. That's what it was. So I had to go to the grocery store. Milk and cat food. And sugar for my coffee. Those were the three things that I had to get. So while I was there, I picked up a... Uh, uh, 
Now that I do buy. I buy a lot of frozen vegetables uh, because they just last longer for me because I never know if I'm actually going to be in the mood to cook. And I just do not like throwing away vegetables. And the ones from the freezer are just as nutritious as the fresh ones. So, um, so I bought a uh, big bag of stew, stew vegetables, which is basically just pre-cut celery, onions, carrots, and uh, potatoes that have been um, flash frozen. That's all. So, and then you throw them with a couple of nice pieces of uh, boneless, skinless chicken thighs uh, in the crock pot, the vegetables, a cup of water, cook, put it, you know, some spices, put it on low, let it cook all day. And at the end of the day, you have chicken stew. Or you make a pot of soup or a, you know, what, whatever the case may be. Actually, we're getting into winter time, so lots of pots of soup. Mm. I love soup. You can make it fresh, <clears throat> freeze it, freezes beautifully. And I save the, uh, I like the, um, I buy the large Greek yogurt um, tubs, you know, the the big ones that are the quart size. And because I, I do like Greek yogurt um, with uh, a cup of Greek yogurt and some toast. Well, not a cup, but a, you know, a cup, a little cup size. <laughs> A little yogurt cup size of yogurt and some fruit in the morning. I think that that is, and a slice of toast. I think that is the perfect way to have breakfast. Okay. Oh, please don't, it's gonna, it's not gonna leave that little white spot for me, is it? No, it's surely not. It's going to go ahead and bleed through all the way to it. That's okay. I can enlarge that with a Posca. Um, okay, so now we need to decide on... Let's see, Y314. This is... Yep, this is the yellow. I guess it's not only my... Uh, Well, now, do I want that? No. You know what? No. Well, because I think what I want to do is I want to use the black for the background. <clears throat> and see where we go, where we are from there. I see Anne do this. She divides up when she has a large space to color with a small tip. She'll divide it up like this into bites and it makes it easier. Rather than using the big chisel tip. Because otherwise you have to just keep capping and uncapping and capping and uncapping. And I, just like I can't stand to, you know, have the milk set out on the counter, I cannot stand to leave the, um, the markers uncapped while I use them. You know, it's fine if I'm coloring with it. 
but I don't want to lay it down uncapped even if I know I'm going to pick it up. So I have to put the caps back on. Because otherwise the markers will dry out. So my brain says. Yeah, I think a black background is perfect. Or this. Boy, you people who like long color and chats are gonna love this one. <laughs> I just, I'll try harder to be more interesting next time. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try that. Okay, now it seems to me that somewhere along the line I lost track of using my green. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try something and we're going to see if it works or not. We're going to use green. in these as opposed to yellow and the reason why I am doing this other than the fact that I want to bring color cohesiveness is that with these outer leaves being yellow and this bar if I made it yellow then it would just blend into each other so this way I can incorporate the green from the center and also bring it all the way out to the outer edge and it'll look like I knew what I was doing right <laughs> it will at least have the appearance that I had a clue as to what I was doing. We'll see. We'll see if it works. We'll use this one as a test. Because remember, everybody, I am learning to color right along with you. I can draw them, but I've always left it in your capable hands to color them. And I've often said that every drawing is an experiment and every coloring for me is as well. I'm going to pull that off of there because it is in my way. It's awfully dark. <clears throat> 
So now I won't really know unless I do the whole thing this way and I'll just go ahead and do it that way because then it will look like um, it will look like uh, I knew what I was doing. But I'm going to do that real quickly off camera because uh, I've noticed that this video is getting uh, up into the close to two hour range and I still want to uh, show you the uh, embellishing that I'm going to do. So let me just do the rest of these in the black and the green and I'll be right back. Whoosh. There we go, just like magic. Uh, all of the black and green is done. And I'm not unhappy with the way that that looks. Uh, one of the things that I do notice though is that there is, because this is a solid color with all of that blue, um, and I used the blue over here, there's a nice uh, balance going on there. But when I look at this one compared with this one, see how much more red it's got on it? So I was thinking that I would add maybe a red, um, I don't know, Nike whoosh uh, in the red over here. I say red, but it's actually shrimp is the color. So this is the R025, but I do just want to make certain of that. Yep, that's the R025 is definitely the shrimp. So let me uh, be bold. We'll go like that. Okay. So maybe we'll just do do something along those lines. Doesn't have to be very much. Just a little something to sort of balance out the way. That looks. Just like adding a Posca mark or, you know, a highlight with your, uh, with your gel pen. Yeah, just sort of like that. Maybe a shorter one on this end. Now this one doesn't have the black lines around it, but you can always fix that. You know, so that I saw somebody do that the other day. Um, I don't know, somebody had added bubbles to a picture. I'm trying to remember who it was now. It might, was it Vicky? I don't remember who it was, um, but they had added some bubbles in white and then to make it look like they'd been there all along she outlined them with um, a black drawing pen and I thought well isn't that interesting so let's see If that will work, why not? <laughs> Just sort of, once again, lens cohesiveness. And you don't have to be an artist to do this. It's just, just a triangle with one short side. 
just like that. And it just makes it look a little bit neater than it was. So that is one kind of embellishing you can do. And you don't have to worry if they're all exactly the same. <clears throat> Nothing in nature, excuse me, is ever exactly the same. Okay. So I think that that makes them different enough yet like enough to satisfy our needs. Okay, now I have, let's see here, I have all sorts of goodies. Uh, but I think, oops, there we go. This is what happens when you clean up your desk. Stuff is no longer where you thought it was. Okay, so I have glitter, the Zier glitter paint markers. I also have the uh, uh, hybrid Pentel dual metallic uh, liquid gel roller pens. Either one of which I can use. Uh, I did swatch these out and these are the um, the Zers, and there isn't really, I mean, I think the, the grassy dark green is kind of close to the turquoise, but I think it's a, a different enough to where I might not want to consider it. But I believe that the Pentel hybrids. I think that the because I'm going to be putting it on over a darker color. If I'm not, I'm not. What was I going to do with it? I was going to do something with it, but maybe that was before. Yeah, I think I was going to do something with that before I decided to do this. Yeah, okay, never mind. <laughs> In this particular case, we are going to go for the uh, uh, orange yellow of the Pentel Hybrid, which is actually what I call copper. Yeah, this is the orange metallic yellow. So, um, yeah, let's use this and uh, let's use it first to go around these. Ooh. You can't see that, but I can. <laughs> see, see how gorgeous that looks right off the bat? And now I can actually, since these are, I, these are not a danger to bleed through. I am holding my breath, yes. It looks really pretty from this side. You can't see it yet, but... Um, but I will... I will show it to you. You can almost see that one. Wait for it. 
what is that uh, Lily Tomlin used to, was it Lily Tomlin that did oh she did Ernestine but who's the one that did wait for it So, yeah. Oh, see, yeah, you can see that. Look at how pretty that is. Ooh. And we could even do... The whooshes. See, I could have skipped the black and just done these. But the black makes it easier to see. So straight coloring with lots of pretty glittery embellishments. I love it. It's one of the things that makes Coloring with markers so much fun. Okay, oops, go get those other two. I always seem to start somewhere in the center. And I'm always going back to that's the last two. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, see? Look at how pretty that is. Okay, then we can skip up and do these ones. Pull this out. I love how juicy these pins are. This was, I learned about these um, over on Coloring Bliss. <coughs> Jen, Jennifer Stay, had uh, gotten some, and she, the title of her video was, I do believe that I, or, or, I found, are these my favorite glitter mark or glitter gel pens of all time? And I believe the answer was yes. <laughs> the hybrids are hard to beat. They really are. For just sheer glitter powder. I love the, the Zers. Uh, I love them, but they're silver. They've got a silver glitter. They've certainly got more colors, but they've got a silver glitter, whereas these are actually a gold glitter. Uh, except for the uh, the greens and the blues and all of that, which are a true green or blue uh, glitter. Okay. Might as well do the outsides of the circles. And these I'm going to flip this book over, everyone. Prepare so that way. Because I am a righty, I do not want to, uh, I don't want to drag my hand through the wet uh, glitter gel. So since I didn't have the presence of mind to start on the right angle.
And once again, you don't have to worry if it's not always on the line. That's not the point. The point is to do something that makes you happy. with something that you color. And if glitter makes you smile like it does me, then uh, go for it. You could also do this with white or you could choose a silver pen well probably not a silver pen because you've got all pretty warm colors but okay so now so there's both of those done oops i can hear you you're telling me about that one aren't you that's that same one i missed the first time okay so yeah all right that's all the way around um, hmm. we should be consistent and do at least all of the um, flower leaves because this is it's turning out to be on the black it's turning out to be much more gold than it is uh, orange and that'll add a little zhuzh to the uh, fluffy gold uh, ends of these. My desk chair has gotten so squeaky over the years. Fortunately, this glitter seems to dry pretty quickly. Um, although I am trying to stay off of it with my other hand. Okay. It, I just stepped outside while the, I had the camera off for a second. <clears throat> and it is a gloriously cool, crisp morning. It's the kind that you hope for in fall. Uh, although it is still a good 69 degrees in the house. Um, I do have all the windows open just now because the air is so beautiful. It was foggy overnight. Um, so I didn't know quite what to expect from today. It's weird to have, even though I live in Virginia Beach, it's not, uh, I don't live anywhere near the actual beach. I live closer to the bay, the Chesapeake Bay. Um, but we only get fog where I am, I don't know, three or four times a year. Not very often. But last night you could barely see across the street. Unlike where I grew up, where we used to get impenetrable fog, uh, you know, all winter long, pretty much, except when the, except when it wasn't foggy. All right. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't want to go too far with all of the other 
you know, circling stuff and all of that with this one. Just, just, I think that, that bar is more than plenty. Um, now, let me see if, now there is, there is one in the Zers. There is one that is, uh, that does have gold as it's, uh, well, actually even it doesn't really. Yeah, no, see, it's more of the, and it's not really silver, it's more pearl. You know, it's sort of a neutral white glitter in that. So I don't want to do that. Let's go with, uh, well, let's look at me being all miserly with my, <laughs> this is my favorite one. <laughs> let's see if, how much is left in the gold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's more left in the gold. So we'll go to the gold. <clears throat> and I was going to uh, just maybe put in a few buttons. Start out with some buttons. Bolts just on the corner. Because you know it all has to be bolted to the page. Little nail heads. Bolts, screws, just polka dots. Whatever they are in your imagination. You can add them in. If you're good at drawing something like a diamond shape. You could draw a diamond shape and maybe put a little hook out there, or not hook, but a little dot out there on each end. Just to add a little embellishment there. So, let's see, there we go. So I just added just those two, just to, you know, just to keep it simple. <clears throat> and, you know, you want to do, you do want to keep it simple. Um, because you can always build on it. And so, you know, maybe you decide that, okay, well, now I would like to go ahead and add at least one more of those on each side. And your diamonds don't have to be perfect. And everything doesn't have to be <clears throat> equally spaced. That, once again, is not what it's about. It's just about doing something that will make you smile. And decorate your page. So there is another set on each side. And so I think I'll stop there and I'll add those in all around in these spots. And um, then I will shoot a picture of this and call it a done video. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed coloring this with me today or tonight. And um, will consider purchasing uh, my books or my art or following my channel. Uh, I, I, I am generally um, more fluffy <laughs> than I am tonight. So I do apologize uh, one last time and then I promise I'm not going to apologize for it again. Uh, but I'm usually much more effervescent. That's the word I'm looking for. Effervescent than I've been this evening. Uh, so I do hope that you enjoyed being here. And until we meet again, please do color something pretty. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.